Welcome to the Sherlock's Team Podcast with me, Charlotte Collins. This week, I'm joined by Harriet Russell, Emma Bigger, and Georgina Blasky. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah, good. good. I am. Um, I dressed very optimistically today. <laughs> I dressed for the season I wanted, not the season that we had. Um, for those listening, I'm wearing. Um, well, well, they're not actually. They're not silk. They're quite thick, but they're kind of satiny pajamas. And um, you have got are. a woolly sock on, though. I've got a woolly sock on, and I've got some layers with me too. But they are. Um, they're like. I don't know how you describe them. Like Italian dining themed. They? Yeah. <laughs> they're like a trattoria like. in Portofino. <laughs> the kind of vibe. And they're all kind of, it's plates. Well, yeah, they're like Portofino plates, aren't they? Yeah. They're very nice. It's like green. Cool. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, they're from Kitchery. Which Lovely. is um, interesting because on the radio this morning, I heard Chris Evans say that it is not only going to be the coldest March for a decade, which is what he oh, originally no. said. He then said, actually, update, it's going to be the coldest March Ever. Oh. Wow. That's upsetting. Well, yeah. I'm glad I wore them today. Yeah, today was so, yeah. your this only chance. might have been the hottest day yeah. of the month. That we're, you know, we're not even in March yet. Um, but, you know. How was everyone's weekend, Georgina? What did you get up to? Um, this weekend, I had a good friend's 50th birthday party, which was really fun. Um, lots of dressing up and dancing. I wouldn't have thought you good. were at the 50th stage yet. Well, I'm not, no. but some of my <laughs> friends are. to be clear, the parties, yeah. Yeah, um, so that, that was all, that was good fun. And then otherwise, just usual pottering around. Um, what did the 50th cooking. involve? Uh, the 50th involved um, drinks, canapes, and dancing. Fun. Oh, proper yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. Proper big party. What did you wear? I wore a Hayley Menzies gold floral dress that Ooh. I actually bought for the summer, but I just sort of wore it with white boots and made it feel a bit cool. more wintry. Nice. Yeah. I feel like I don't hear her name very often, Hayley Menzies, mm. anymore. Not anymore. Not no. since the cardigans, kind of. Yeah. There's that store in Sloan Square. Yeah, she's still there. Yeah. yeah. Still there, I she's think. Still got the store yeah, in, so. she, yeah, she had a yeah. space in Notting Hill, but I don't think she's got that anymore. Mm. Yeah. The one in Sloan Square is still there, for mm. sure. Mm. Nice brand. Fun. Mm. Emma, yeah. what did you get up to? Saturday, I went to the farmhouse for lunch, nice. which was really nice. Met up with some friends, and then... Where did you eat? The main barn. Nice. And then we sat outside, because it was spring. It was cold, but yeah. it was still like sunny enough to so nice. sit, so that was nice. And then Sunday, I went to the Beyond the Streets exhibition. At the, at the Gallery. Gallery. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. Took the kids, so they enjoyed that, because it's all quite, obviously, visual and colourful and uh, lots of music. For those who don't know, what is the exhibition? So it's kind of through the decades of graffiti and pop culture and um, music, and it just kind of, there's three floors they have kind of installations of TVs and news and all things kind of attached to graffiti. So it's nice. Cool. Yeah, it was good to do with the kids. So we both enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So it's like something for everyone. Okay, nice. Yeah. Harry, what did you get up to? Um, not a, hot, a lot. Saturday, I I prepared my veg bed. I'm very excited. Oh, wow. In my um, garden at my parents' house, I've taken it upon myself to create a vegetable garden this good year. You. I know. Do you know what? Someone came up for me on TikTok that some vegetable girl I don't know, she grows, she grows <laughs> things vegetable. whatever she grows stuff she lives in America but oh my god she made me want to grow grow everything mm. just, she was like going to her in-laws or something and she was making she's like that her like most viewed ones are a couple of times she's gone to her in-laws so she makes them a basket from the veg garden mm-hmm. and it's like and then she gets her like homemade honey and mm. some flowers and it's like all in this little basket and I'm so just like nice. oh I want to so be wholesome. that but does she live somewhere sunny I always think like, yeah and also it looks like, like, yeah. I have like an astroturfed terrace like yeah. a garden <laughs> but you know I mean steps. yeah it's it's an investment not mm. necessarily financially there are definitely ways to do it affordably don't you just grow, it's so naive do you not just like go and buy seeds from the um what's it called garden center garden, garden center, center. <laughs> step one pick a London kid without a joke but you're a London kid um yes essentially mm. um it depends what you want to grow though because some things have to germinate first in a seedling tray before you put them in the ground right you've lost your um, idea. i know it, this is what i mean in terms of effort it's not a financial effort it's literal effort mm. literal hard work so what have you planted We've not planted anything yet because it's too early what, for what, most things. Okay, but the we plan, planted? we've got um, potatoes that are chitting. So that's what I mean. They have to sprout before they go oh, in the ground. Like vocab to know as well. <laughs> I know. There's a whole other language. <laughs> okay. um, and then our bed isn't massive. So the thing about veg is it grows, it can grow like an absolute weed. So you have to have quite a lot of space, which we don't have. So we're at the moment, we're aiming for 
potatoes, um, peas, and courgette. The courgette will go crazy, I think. So we have to be quite. I love courgette. Yeah, mm, and I'm gonna. Good. A friend of mine told me that she grew. Her mother grows tomatoes in hanging baskets. So I'm gonna give oh, that yeah. a go because again, we're short on space. So okay. um, we haven't really got room for tomato plants. Plus, there's an awful lot of wildlife around my parents' okay. house. Um, nothing like exotic. I just mean like cats and squirrels and pigeons mm. and stuff and. Um, Summer, who works on our Lux and Co team, was telling me that last year she basically lost everything to rabbits. Oh, so, to rabbits, mm. that's so sweet though. Like, if you're going to lose it to something, it's not when you put this much work in. It's like that's bloody better than rabbits. like rats though. I've actually been, I've planted up pots in my garden for like just spring bulbs and stuff. And the other day I went out to check them, I've put chicken wire on them and oh, everything. I need to do that. And this bloody squirrel has lifted the chicken oh. wire off and given it a right dig. Is it too late to do that for bulbs? Do you think for bulbs it probably is, but for veg, you're right on mm. track. So I have, in my, my, I've got, you know, my house is a, I don't even know if it's Victorian or Georgian, but it's just like a London terrace house. And I've got, you know, along my front wall, I've got a planter box mm-hmm. that currently has stones and quite a few weeds growing out of it. And I would love to do something. And you it feels, loads. but like, that feels like something I should do myself. But like, mm-hmm. what, what do you do? You just go and buy soil and then you just plant seeds. Depends what you want to do. Well, if I just wanted some pretty flowers. I would say now you've missed the window to propagate something, okay. which means like growing from seed or from <laughs> I bulb. Know what propagate means. That's like a that's <laughs> <the> general <laughs> okay. word. I did not know what propagate meant when I started all you, of this. That's a word you can use in normal. I still had no idea what people okay. meant. So yeah, if you want to grow something like literally from nothing, mm. I'd, I'd, for flowers, mm. I think you've kind of missed the window because they do need a good five months. And if you want like a rose bush, yeah. do, you ha- do you have to go and buy a rose, but you can't just plant roses in soil yeah of course you can oh why do people buy bushes then well it's good to buy a little plant and again going back to your window box Mm -hmm. at the kind of mid to end of march you could get some really nice cyclamen or something and put in a bit of lavender and you would go to the garden center and it would already be like oh i see because it's already that high and you then pop it in and it will continue to grow but you will get the instant color hit that you're probably after also sorry i was just gonna say because i've been researching the lazy girls uh, options you can get pre-planted window boxes yeah okay that are delivered to your door three times a year mm-hmm. and they literally i know it's so lazy and this <laughs> no, 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 it's your green Georgina fingers says, it's um but, it's the um, best way to get like that instant gratification because a lot of gardening is not instant gratification yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't want to garden i just want my body. yeah exactly branches, yeah. um and as long as you're buying something that's perennial it will come back year after year so i could technically just put a load of soil in that and then buy multiple little lavender yeah. bushes and like little lavender yeah or called, whatever and just stick them in there and they'd be and they would just live do yeah. i have to yeah but them? you could also then change it up seasonally yeah which yeah. is what mm. going to what emma said these companies do so yes. then yeah. when it's more summery you choose something else and then f- from autumn into winter you could just have something yeah. evergreen that just looks really nice yeah okay are you into gardening i mean i love nothing more than sitting in a pretty garden <laughs> am i into garden? no i wouldn't i would quite like to maybe mm. but it's sort of one of those things on the when i'm a grown-up mm. i'm gonna get really into gardening mm-hmm. and it's like oh shit, I am a grown up and I still haven't quite managed to get into mm. gardening. But I also feel like there's a distinction. Like I'm not that interested in being into gardening. I spoke with Tamer, but I just would like my like my spaces to look mm. pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just feels a bit pathetic to get a gardener. I'd just like to make it very clear that we have a gardener. Yeah. <laughs> it does like a lot of the heavy lifting. Well, yeah, but what you're suggesting is not the same as like lawn mowing. No, no. Different he job. does a lot of the manual labour. And when I wanted a veg bed, he was the one who put the raised bed in for me. I was not there with my hammer and nails. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no. So okay. Got I just it. like to Oh, it's raised. Clear. Oh, that's nice. Raised is better for drainage in veg. Oh, you yeah, can, you know, oh. I know, you can put it straight into the ground, but it really depends on what your soil is and the aspect and everything like that. Okay, gosh, wow. yeah. I don't think I've got time for this. I think it's the. It's the <laughs> I was talking to yeah. my friend about it the other day. She was like, "You need an Instagram about this." I was like, "What yes. for age old gardening tips you that should. anyone could look up on Google?" <laughs> Yeah, but like you just like a quick guide. When... Yeah, you just need someone yeah, who like can this. tell you everything. Exactly. Agreed. Like, like this. this actually yeah, yeah. was probably as yeah. far as my research will go. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank I'm you. always here. <laughs> thank you so much. Can I tell you what I did this weekend? I went to I went to Glen Eagles. For your birthday. It yes. was my birthday, yes. Which have any of you been? No. No. Okay, so it is so far from what I expected. I for, for the record, very much paid for ourselves. Wasn't wasn't a press day or anything. The the comparison I would make is like Vegas. Like, have, have you been to Vegas? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know how when you stay in a Vegas hotel, it's just like, it's just so miles vast and, and, and everything and is so, it's miles and everything is enormous and there's just like thousands of people there, mm-hmm. but it's still done to like a nice enough quality that you're not like, this is disgusting. It's like that, but it's a much better quality than that. So it's mm. not like Vegas in terms of like 
vibes. Yeah. But if it, it it felt like like the queues and the volume of people and the enormity of the space and the grounds and everything it, the, you know when somewhere just reminds you again and again of somewhere and it, it was giving like sorry queues for, for what for like everything <laughs> so like the queue at, at the check-in was always super long or like so you get to breakfast and they're like okay it's a 10 minute wait so then you're like oh that's annoying hmm. but then they're like but let us escort you into here and they send you into this lovely lounge and you have coffee and pastries while you wait for breakfast like everything's really clever in that it's done to a nice enough standard that you're not irritated by the fact that it's like this enormous hotel so how many rooms does it have it's actually only got 250 or only it's quite i mean it's got 250 hmm. rooms and that's more than cottages and residences and a couple well, of residences but yeah. obviously it's really close to edinburgh and glasgow it's within an hour from both of them and it you can tell straight away that it's somewhere that people go like it you know it's a local place for for the you know for celebrations, for dinners, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's got everything. Whether you're going and to it's like, quite touristy. Is it quite touristy? Or? It, it was. We didn't hear a single other language. Really? Were we there? No. Rick, this sounds so stupid. Way more Scottish people than I thought that there mm. would be. Like, as in, <laughs> it's obviously a place that locals, you know, treat mm-hmm. as like a somewhere that you go. Mm. I, in particular, loved it. It is so. I just thought it would be like Heckfield, like a kind of boutique style i don't know really why i thought that but anyway it's as i say it's absolutely vast but it means it's like they call it the playground and there really is like it is like an adult playground there are endless things you could do it's like the facilities for kids are amazing but it's also not like an annoying place to be if you don't have children you know there's adults only swimming pools and like they're really good at keeping it separate but there's just so much you can do there. We did off-road driving in something called an Argo Cat, which is a four-wheel drive that's amphibious as well as oh, able cool. to go on the which was like so much fun. But I mean, there are endless activities you could do and like seven restaurants or something. There's pick and mix stands. There's wow. ice cream stores. Like it's it's like a. I don't, that is so city. not what I thought it would be like. Me neither. I, I thought, thought it was like, like some home. sleepy hotel or on a, a golf stuffy. course, yeah. kind of like, thing. Not at all. But but the thing is, it is. It is that as well. So like the golf courses are so beautiful and like we walked around the PGA, tour, you know, you could go for that kind mm. of holiday and there were some some kind of stuffy older Scottish people. I mean that in the nicest way. They were so chic, so elegant, who obviously use it in that way. But then equally, some of the, some of the room, look at this bathroom. They've, like, they've, they've been refurbing it for months on end. Like that's the powder room in the downstairs. It's actually, it, the photograph is like really orange, but it's like, it's all oh, powder wow. pink. Like all the spaces were just so beautiful. Like, you know, it's got like Annabelle's vibe. How did you mm. get there? We flew. So you can obviously do various things. We flew to Edinburgh. It's an hour's flight. It's then under an hour in a taxi from Edinburgh to Glen Eagles. We took the scenic route home like scenic route back to the airport which was unbelievable there's these incredible new bridges and i don't know linking one bit but anyway really really beautiful and all in all i think trains are really expensive i think it was more expensive to take the train and also obviously it's mm. way longer and well and a bit unpredictable these days quite and i mean you could drive technically when we, we looked it up yesterday it said seven hours oh no mm. and also like we all know seven means nine oh. and, you know no it's not worth it we were five hours door to door when we came home yesterday so Anyway, I really recommend it, particularly for families, but actually, but we had a great time as a couple. What a so. lovely trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really lovely. yeah. Has anyone been watching anything, reading anything, anything to recommend, Harriet? I watched, it's actually, I think it's probably getting over three years old, but it's on Netflix. It's called The Boys in the Band. Have you heard of no. it? So originally, I think right before the pandemic, it was on Broadway. It's a play originally mm-hmm. and had a really sort of stellar lineup. And then I think, don't necessarily quote me, but because of the pandemic, it sort of got shut down. And then before you knew it, they'd made a film of it to kind of compensate for the lost run. Um, I don't know whether the film was always in the works and it, they just sort of expedited the process or is it, what. So is it a film of the play? Yeah. Right. And, but the cast is pretty mega so jim parsons plays kind of like the main guy who for anyone who doesn't know is sheldon in the big bang theory and then the sort of supporting cast but i use that term loosely is andrew reynolds zachary quinto loads of big names and essentially it focuses it's a real like character study and it's clearly a play as opposed to a film of eight friends in new york on an evening in 1968 it's one of the friends birthdays and Jim Parsons is hosting his birthday party. And it all sort of is fun and games to begin with. And then slowly over the course of the evening, it sort of turns into a very like, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf type vibe. And they all start kind of like saying some rather unpleasant home truths. And you realize that maybe they're not 
friends in the typical sense of that word, but because of the time they're living in, homosexuality is still illegal um, in New York at this time. You realise they're kind of bound together for other reasons rather than like pure friendship. It's mm. very, very good. Okay, it sounds really good. Yeah. Mm. On Netflix? On Netflix. I okay. recommend. Okay, thanks. I don't really have any questions. It sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? Emma? Um, I started watching, is it The Trouble with Fleischman? Or oh, yeah. Fleischman's oh, yeah. in Trouble? Fleischman's, Fleischman's in, in Trouble. In Trouble, that's it. I watched the first one. Um, yeah, I've watched, I've only watched two, so I can't wholeheartedly recommend it. But, you know, I'm getting into it. It's, it's got good cast. It's um, Jesse Eisenberg. Claire Danes plays his wife. And she basically, I mean, I don't know if you've read the book, but she basically disappears and it's kind of follows his anxious path of discovering where she is and so yeah I think I don't, I don't know what you thought I, it's I thought the dating app stuff was weirdly dated I'm not gonna lie what the oh yes and yeah I feel like Claire Danes gets um I think she's a great actress but I think she plays the same part a lot of the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. which is sort of woman cold up type mm-hmm. bitch is kind of what I was gonna okay. say <laughs> when I think of um Homeland she was just I just think of her crying all the time yeah but sort of that really like clenched kind yeah, of tense. feel to her yeah um and like I say quite sort of um in this at least she's very very cold but actually when it goes back I think it's the second episode you see her as in a different when, way. when they first mm. met and she's a totally different character totally different person, yeah. Yeah. so people love it so the series came out it's, it's a rarity that it came out in america and it's it finished in the states and now we're getting it and people really raved about the series like as a whole mm. and i think people really rated the last episode i actually gave up on the book like really far mm. into it like maybe 150 pages 200 pages and mm-hmm. i didn't really see where it was going i'm still i still not i actually ended up googling it because i thought fuck it I just want to know what yeah. happened and I remember thinking oh nothing really did happen and I was expecting a gone girl style you know, mm. sorry I don't know if it's a spoiler to mm. say there is no gone girl style twist it's mm. it's more like a kind of psychological yeah so it's not unraveling. really about her disappearance no. it's more about him growing old and exactly all that kind of stuff yeah it's, yeah it's not quite as dramatic as you're led to believe and mm. yeah you think it's going to be some kind of big reveal and I found it a bit mm. that, that would be very annoying if I get to the end and yeah I'm like, sorry <laughs> but people have really and I know and I do think that the, sh- the, the show is slightly different to the book from mm. what I've heard so um okay. and it generally seemed to have been really well received so don't know I, I watch it I will definitely watch it mm. having mm-hmm. not loved the book interesting Georgina um I actually went to the theatre a couple of weeks ago and saw Sylvia oh, at yes. the Old Vic um with Beverly Knight and it was just absolutely brilliant was it really uh, yeah and I was pleased to see because I went on opening night so I was really pleased to see then that the critics were kind of all praising um it was sort of take two so they I actually went to see it the first time and it wasn't really finished they called it a workshop production but oh. I don't think it was meant to be a workshop production <laughs> um and then covid and and the rest of that so they are now it's and it was really different actually it felt really different to the first time i watched it um so it's all um it's katie prince who is um an amazing kind of dance choreographer and it's done in the style of hamilton i guess it's kind of the closest thing um so it's very stripped back set and it's all kind of um rap and dance um and it's yeah, it's really good. But it's about it's suffragettes. about the suffragettes, right? Yeah. And Sylvia is it's the Pankhurst family, and Sylvia is Emily Pankhurst's daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about the different siblings and things that happen, and then it's about their campaign for women's rights to have the vote. So kind of like Hamilton, it's a true story but told through a yeah unexpected medium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, it's brilliant. It's uplifting. It's moving. It's disturbing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of got everything. Okay, she's amazing. Did you see? Did you see her Beverly Knight talk about it on Graham Norton? A few, she was on it a few weeks ago, and she was telling some story about how she was performing it for Beyonce. I don't know. Anyway, she's just amazing, isn't she? I think she's. Awesome. Um, but her energy and her, God, her voice. Yeah. I mean, they've all got amazing voices. I have to say. Yeah, she just commands your attention. She commands the stage, but the you know this, they're not really supporting the the, the mm. rest of the cast. They're all amazing, and um, yeah, it's it's a really energetic, uplifting, and educational nice. evening mm. so yeah sounds great it was really good do you know how long it's on for sorry i don't Bother. um okay well old vic you said the old vic yeah i feel like it's um maybe till about april but i maybe we shouldn't say get your tickets get your tickets now. get your tickets now. <laughs> um everybody's brought something along to talk about today do we start with the mermaid lady yep here she is okay <laughs> and it's who, blue who is she and what does she do so she's called kate mcleod 
also known as the Hebridean mermaid. Right. And, um, well, there are two. There's also one here called Emma Parker. There's actually quite a few. And basically, these are predominantly women, it seems, who buy these very long mermaid tails or monofins. Uh. And um, they swim with them and it boosts fitness and mindfulness. And apparently the... Maimin Mermaid Academy in Bournemouth in Dorset claims to have trained more than 2,000 mermaids oh, okay. taught by qualified swimming instructors and free divers. So I kind of like, I get like, I can really understand how that's good for your core. Like I can mm, really yeah. feel the <laughs> idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's I can feel cool, it. Yeah, actually. like I get it. Yeah. But I don't understand the kind of purporting to be mermaids side of it. Like wouldn't, surely there's a version of that fin that looks like, I mean, for those listening, it's it's a it's a fake mermaid. It's not like a kind of, Think about like a flipper, right? That doesn't look like a fish's foot. So why must <laughs> this look like feet? a... You know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> you know, it looks like a piece of equipment rather than something like yes. aquatic. Yes. Like you could have something more practical. Why, do, why yeah. not have something more practical? I feel like it's wild swimming meets cosplay. That's the point. It's £150 <laughs> for one of those. There are children's ones for 40 okay. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw this girl on a like YouTube video or something. Yeah, she's also a... Yeah. You, she said it was like about feeling closer to nature okay and i guess you don't feel that much closer to nature when you're in like scuba gear or mm. something as you say more practical so maybe this makes her feel more at one but it's kind water? of and i don't mean to be disparaging but it's kind of then like buying like a bunny costume and going for a walk in the woods Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like what's the difference so, <laughs> that is the best analogy but I've is ever it not heard. the same <laughs> is yeah, it no, not i think you're yeah. i think you're right well, so the other one, who is called Emma Harper, Emma mm. Harper says the distinction between mermaids and their reasons for swimming like one is important. There are the glamour mermaids, oh. she says, all beautiful in their headdresses. But now I'm slightly older, I don't care what people think and it's more fun than Pilates. I don't know if that really gives you a reason as to why she does it, but basically it seems to be a kind of fun, life is too short, we're right. just going to put this tail on That's and... Fair feel fabulous feel good swimming. i'm sorry and where does i just want to understand where it comes up to and where what Here, you wear with it it sort of comes up to your waist yeah it's like a jean and there's oh a bikini God, top enormous. hang on pass that in. <laughs> that would be so enormous. uncomfortable so what her feet finished there yeah, yeah. and is the actual tail mean? fin part that must be quite like thick and substantial if that's all you're using to like well you know how yourself. you do butterfly yeah. yeah it's like you're doing oh, yeah, butterfly must, I completely, it's so, like having lit weighted butterfly yeah but also with no option to like you've got to be pretty strong yeah, yeah. You, can't yeah, yeah you can't you can't you then can't just like stop. put it on. No, no. no and also what do you do do you so you, do you put it on on i don't know why i'm looking at you like <laughs> I, I, I do i do i am i was about to say i'm a bit curious as to why you're directing <laughs> the all these <laughs> questions on the me. side do you sit on the side of the pool and then she sort of wiggle on? into it i yeah. guess and then yeah. pop in and i wonder if it feels like so many questions i wonder if it feels like a wetsuit or if it feels like a kind of foamy well, you wouldn't want it to and weigh down and get too on. heavy. I was going to say, it must be like a scuba type material. I wonder as well if you take the fin part off, so you like wiggle into the... Oh, maybe the... Like, 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 like well, yeah, wing. but you only have to get to the edge, so it's not that bad. And then you just pop the fin on when you're ready to go. No, I think there must be little holes for your feet. In the fin part. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then you tuck So it's like a trail. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. mm. I'm sorry, where do you do this? Anywhere you like. But That's do they the whole go... Point. Well, in Dorset, you go to the Academy for Mermaids. You have to yeah. be trained. I'm just first. wondering, they don't say, I'd love to know. This woman has said it has helped with her core after having three children in a C-section. Oh, there's a parenting feature in it, Georgina. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, well, fascinating. Emma, what was it you watched along? Uh, so I saw this in Sunday Times style. It's about how basically since the pandemic that we've all got a lot ruder mm. and mm. everyone's just more impatient mm. and just not being as polite to each other um and there is uh liz wise who's the etiquette advisor at debrett's she says that in the pandemic we were very isolated and people now are very self i'm um, sorry unself aware when they're in public so we've kind of regressed slightly um and yeah and all good manners apparently gone to pot do you agree I definitely think people are a lot more impatient, like mm. on the tube and, you know, tutting, walking down the street mm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wonder if we're just more vocal about it. 
what you think the British I'm more inclined to, has melted away. Yeah, I'm just more inclined to tut at someone now than I might have been in the past, but I think it doesn't I'm not any more irritated. But are you tutting because you feel they're breaking some kind of post post COVID convention of oh, behaviour? Yeah. Are you tutting in a kind of oh you're in my personal space? Mm, yes, yes, yeah, something to do with COVID. Yeah. yeah Whereas before you would have accepted COVID. that. Now just, you're more germ aware or distant. No, no, aware. no. It's more just that I w- now I would just I would have been too polite before to say it. Oh, I see. Annoyed you know is mean? more yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Harriet, you earlier said that you thought you agreed with. Yeah, the I do. I wonder if it's just sort of a like survival of the fittest thing, which is what we've all been through, right? It's mm. like when when our species is faced with like a supposedly like um, extinction threat whether it's then natural as the Debrett's lady is saying to kind of go very insular and be like well I've just got to worry about me and keep myself alive and if we have dependence then dependence alive so therefore our like tolerance for things has completely diminished Mm. because the pandemic to tie it to the pandemic is a bit weird isn't it because at the beginning of lockdown everyone was like helping their neighbors Mm -hmm. and like doing old people shopping and yeah Yeah. and then very quickly that like went away didn't Mm. it and we've been left with yeah. I think the, the length opposite. of time exactly just turns. Yeah. Into I don't know how that's happened, but it definitely has. That's why I think it's got to do with this like I'm under siege, I'm under threat mm. psychology that goes into like a very primal part of mm, our brains. I'm sure it does. Mm. And then when we come out of it, we just haven't had any event that would force us to do anything for anyone else. That sounds Perhaps. really de- dreadful, but it also says here that like hate speech on Twitter has increased by. 58 percent mm. well that's cheery so i also well i think we've got a lot more to be angry about than we did before the, and i know it's all relative but like if you look at i mean not that i'm encouraging hate speech by any by any stretch but just I, be honest guys <laughs> yeah but but as in you know there are so many th- you know we had brexit to deal with before the pandemic but pandemic and subsequent years have have been brutal for mm-hmm. so many reasons for so many people so i wonder if it's just a kind of socioeconomic thing more you know that everybody's just pissed off and angry mm. and tired and irritated from years of <sighs> being beaten down with yeah. can't look on the bright side anymore I know, it's not very jolly chat is no, it? Tina, what do you think? i kind of find that feature quite hard to get on board with if i'm honest um i see so much goodwill Aww. still left i see people holding doors open for people people giving people space people helping how with... close is your planet to my planet <laughs> I don't know, where are you hanging out? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's the way you want to set for people. Maybe, maybe it's me. But maybe then, I'm I, you know, what I might see as someone being kind and considerate, someone else might interpret as that person interfering. Mm. So it's where you're coming from. Um, and I also think that um, there is a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. Mm. You know, there's a war. There are, what was it? 200 migrants on a boat that got mm-hmm. sank that, that sunk at the weekend and you know there are global issues to be angry about exactly um political issues to be angry about um i think it's really important to be vocal about those mm-hmm. so i but i don't see that as bad behaviors or bad manners i think mm-hmm. that's just calling out bad behavior mm-hmm. maybe but i think in terms of neighborliness and people in smaller communities i don't feel that i'm witnessing personally mm. um people behaving badly if anything i'd say i think london's probably not the best like, like london mm. is famous for people being quite rude anyway yeah, but i live in london but you don't take the tube to work every day and i feel well, like the tube I, is, I, the, <laughs> is the uh yeah. it's like this epicenter of poor london <laughs> manners and life, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i think there was a lot of people stealing things off doorsteps that's mm. gone up that's can gone up. i tell you how many times that's happened to me it is yeah. awful the first time it happened they stole something quite expensive then we then we learned our lesson the second time it happened they stole six mr muscles so i hope you enjoyed that <laughs> thief which it got is amazon so box. random what people are stealing but also i mean they're, they're just so, taking the box aren't they they, they the don't box. know what's in it exactly but... it's just an amazon box. but they're so brazen these men mm. like i've got a nest it's all on video mm. and they yeah. literally just walk up they kind of pretend they're on the phone they open the gate take the package and walk off yeah it's mm. so and then dump annoying. it halfway down the street oh yeah we found all the packaging on yeah. the yeah on the street oh my yeah. god that makes me angry makes i'm happy really to angry. get cross about that You're damn right i think we all should yeah <laughs> exactly um okay well that was cheery um <laughs> yeah, sorry for bringing the mood down what do you think one. emma what do you find the rudest thing that people do you know you also commute every single day what what is your thing where you're just like oh that makes my blood boil when uh people on the tube have their bag on the seat mm. and then there's people standing and 
and they just they i don't know it's just so brazen like i would always say please can move for back yeah mm. yeah but the fact that they don't do you yeah, know what i mean like they just sit there like it's just arsy don't yeah. you get scared about what someone's gonna say if you if you do that I would be I like, like I would, I'm going to just stand for four stops because really? I just don't want to no, say I would please can you move oh, your bag is... yeah I would say I'm, I'm so sorry would you yeah. mind moving your bag please or do you mind they're like yeah it? I'll just get my knife out from <laughs> that's what I would think would be about I would probably I mean look if it was like a seven foot tall man with like a I don't know a huge rucksack maybe I would and maybe it would be a maybe it would be a case of Knowing who, knowing who, yeah, exactly. <laughs> knowing who to stop beef with on the tube. <laughs> but, um, I love the yeah. idea of you looking these people up and down, and being like, "I can take her." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, she'll do. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Harry, what do you think is the rudest thing? People do? I don't know if it's one thing, but I think the thing that bothers me the most is not actually like not holding a door open for me or something. I probably couldn't care less. It's just entitlement mm. these days. Like so many people thinking that they're entitled to something over me. The number of times I find myself in the street being like, oh, okay, your life is so important. Do you say that aloud? Literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've become that person. I called, I've become I that called person. someone a menace the other day and Ben was like, you're 70 years old. It's like, they were cy- we've got a one-way street and they were mm. cycling the wrong way. And I said, you're a menace. And I think a lot judge. of my like rude and entitled stuff happens on the roads because I drive mm. up and down to Surrey quite a lot. So it's things like when people overtake you on the inside of a lane in London to like just make it through the traffic lights and then you follow them all the way up the hill and they're now like one car length yeah, ahead yeah. of you. You're like, was mm. that worth it? I'm so glad that was worth it to you. Yeah, I so agree. So it's just stuff like that. I know. Driving in London is the pits. And someone on our team was going to a dinner and they said that CD Khan was going to be at the event and they said, oh, I'm, I really hope that I'm not sat next to him because I wouldn't know what to say to him. I was like, are you joking? I know <laughs> I what I'd say. I've got so much yeah. to say to Sadiq Khan. Me I've too. Got all the chat. Me too. <laughs> oh God, London's impossible. Okay. Um, well, to end on a cheery note, Georgina, thrilled that you think that people are still being kind and positive mm. to one another. It's nice that we come to work and everybody's like that. Oh, yeah. At least yeah. you get it once you, once yeah. you get off the train and through the door. Um, Harriet, what did you bring? Um, so I found this report that came out. Milan Fashion Week has just sort of wrapped. Is mm-hmm. that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but obviously Fashion Month is in full swing. And this was in The Guardian um, saying that bland standing is the biggest trend to come out of Fashion Week, especially Milan. Um, does anyone know what it means? I would imagine it means boring bland. clothes. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. When I read it, I was like, oh, what does that mean? And then I, I read the article and it was like, oh no, it's quite a literal term. Okay. In the sense that... Simple. Yeah. Mm. Simple it's a bit fashion. like norm core. You kind of wonder that... Or is it more like the quiet luxury Yeah, thing. true. Is it that? It's kind of a mix, I would say, because what it's essentially getting at, and I think the reason that they sort of jumped on it after Milan was typically Milan is known like the Gucci's and everything, quite a lot of maximalism, quite a lot of intense luxury, like really fine fabrics mm. and crazy expensive bags and things like that. And then this year, obviously, Alessandro Michele has left Gucci. This is his final show. So it's kind of this new mm. wave is starting to come into Milan. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, they said Prada in particular, was really, really simple. And they're saying it's this sort of reaction back away from insane over the top fashion mm. to things that are practical, things that will stay in your wardrobe for a long time. And they say the main driving forces are cost of living I was and gonna say sustainability. Sure it must mm. be an economy thing. Oh, and sustainability as well, of course. Because things like if you bought, I don't know, like a pink feather coat, mm. like unless you're a maximalist through and through. Mm-hmm and you're an Iris Atful type who's never going to dress mm. any other way, then sure, that might stay in your wardrobe mm. for ages. But for most people, mm. they'd probably tire of it. Mm. So they're saying, you know, the focus is now much more on things that you're going to own yeah. for that 20, makes 25 sense. years. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. I thought Prada was beautiful. Mm. I suppose it's a shame for those who do want to dress in a slightly more, a slightly less kind of conformist way that that's, I mean, grey coats, well, I don't know if you, how much, you know, you noticed this, but across, I mean, practically every mm. show, grey coats was the kind of MO for Milan in particular. Mm-hmm. And like, that's, I mean, that's that's lovely. That's elegant. It's, it's a great trend to be setting rather than, I don't know, as you say, pink feathers, mm. because it, it's more applicable to everybody. But equally, it leaves me feeling a bit deflated. Mm. But I don't you think there's always a trend and then there's always a, a, an opposing trend. Yes. So like, you know, I still think there is, some fun on mm-hmm. the cap like I still think you know you do get your sequins and True. your feathers and your metallics and and to be fair if you I don't know if you saw much of Bottega but there was some 
there were some jeans that actually were leather, even though they looked denim and they yeah, were Yeah, that so was grand. crazy. And I then, couldn't Yeah, they that. were wild. And then, I mean, Gucci, the Gucci show has been completely panned mm. because it was a bit of a hot mess. But equally, if you like that kind of fun, sequin, mm. frivolous thing, you're probably more likely to find something there for you mm. than anywhere else. Did you see Praja? Mm. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was, I mean, it was, it was so, so stunning. amazing. Yeah. So, so amazing. Yeah. Any other highlights? Putting on the spot, sorry. Um... <laughs> Or any other highlights so far? We've obviously had London and Milan, uh, London and New York as well. I mean, I always like Bottega. I just think their how they do their luxury is just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Prada, as you say, was stunning. Any so. thoughts on Burberry? I was just about to say, what do you guys Daniel think Lee's of Burberry? First Burberry show. I I thought it was great. I love that he did all that color mm-hmm. and you know progressed the check mm-hmm. and kept that going. I like that. I think it was hyped up so much. So he had, he had you know he had big shoes to mm. fill, but. I think he kept the kind of the Britishness of the brand and I think he did well. I read something, no, lie, saw it on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, where did I see this really interesting analysis? Obviously it was on TikTok. Um, and they were saying that, you know, they kind of Ricardo Tisky's Burberry wasn't selling. That's kind of ultimately why it didn't work out. So, you know, Daniel Lee came in and the whole idea was that he was going to kind of do what he did to at Burberry, do what he did at Bottega mm. to Burberry. And that, you know, there was this whole kind of fuss made about this return to Britishness and going back to British kind of core. And obviously Burberry is so synonymous with that. And then actually, if you look at the show, you're a bit like, oh, really? Has like, is that what's happened? Because there's, I mean, there's not a trench coat in sight or mm. not a kind of t- traditional garbadine one anyway. And, um, but then this person was saying that actually maybe this is kind of, that's just not the Britain of today. And this is actually more reflective of mm-hmm. a kind of grungier, younger, moodier, kind of goes back to our last conversation, mm. angrier, yeah. slightly more punk Britain, um, because it had it, I mean, it's it would be a reach to say it was Westwood-esque, but it has that yeah, angry that London mm-hmm. feel way more than a kind of classic, sophisticated Burberry. Yeah, thing. and the, the imagery, the campaign, Im- like that's very much yeah, that Yeah, it is, vibe. so true. It's almost so, got a it's interesting you, It's like a new Britain. Yeah, 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 it's interesting you say about punk and like new Britain and stuff and that very like almost 80s vibe mm. to it because I don't know if anyone else listens to Big Garner's This Old Thing podcast. I have, but not, go on. Not There's recently. a new series mm. um, and whilst some of the, not all the guests have been great this season in my opinion, but the last one was Sandy Powell who recently won the BAFTA Fellowship Award. She's possibly the most famous costume designer yes, who, ever. By the way, was sat, so the BAFTAs were on the Sunday and on the Friday we had been at dinner and she had been in the restaurant and I didn't know until she popped up on screen on Sunday because she is completely Very distinctive, distinctive mm-hmm. with bright orange, yeah. I mean, dyed orange hair. And we were like, oh, she was at Scott's. Anyway. <laughs> we know her. <laughs> Obviously having a celebratory dinner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, she's great. I went to like a private talk with her last year and she was brilliant. Anyway, she said on the podcast that she thinks punk is like, the first and last like original movement of fashion so i wonder if there's anything in his mind that mm. thinks like if if he is expected to go into burberry and i'm sure his brief is like make it original mm. he's thinking what was the last like original kind of movement in yeah. fashion because she was making this really eloquent point that like all the decades 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s hark back to something else so like the 70s are very inspired by the 30s a lot of the fashion and she was like but punk comes along and you and it's the first mm. time you think we've not seen any of this before this feels so new well and equally it's such a british phenomenon as well mm-hmm. it's such a british mm. look and feel and and it kind of would make sense that burberry which then you know if you're looking for something that feels relevant but not but but a departure at the same time mm. that mm-hmm. kind of feels like an obvious landing place and rebellious too like you say mm. Georgina about there's so much to be angry about like mm. whether it's I don't know rowing back of abortion laws or whatever like people are people are pissed off mm. and the last time they were seriously pissed off mm. it was um yeah 80s Britain mm. yeah it's so true more cheery chat <laughs> <laughs> okay so in conclusion bland core what was it called bland, bland standing bland standing yeah uh, um, bland core Mermaid core is another big Mermaid trend. Core. <laughs> We've got them all here today. Naked dresses, indie sleeves, oh, which might be harking to Burberry as well. Indie sleeves. Indie sleeves. I don't yeah. think I'll be doing that one. <laughs> no. Okay, let's do some quick fire questions. Uh, spring fashion must have pieces. One thing you are coveting for spring. Emma? I know it's really boring, but an oversized trench, because I just like get so much wear. Yeah. And there's so many. Can I tell you what I've well. got coming? It's arriving on Wednesday. I've got the sleeper one, the one with the flowers on oh it. Oh my God, it's incredible. I know. Exciting. I know. Is it one side, is it, is it reversible? No. I don't think so. I think there's two different colours. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's a blue and then there's a pink. And I think it's like, 
Okay, so I'm going to Paris. I'm going to Paris. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to Paris next weekend. And I have like, I have this aesthetic in mind. I just need to buy a pair of sunglasses. But the sunglasses are really expensive and I can't buy them just for this outfit that I have in my head. <laughs> but, but this, if, if the sleeper trench is as good as I think it is, it's like a pink, It's for those listening, it's a pink... It's somewhere between a trench and it. What is that type of jacket called? You know, like a barber. Like a gabardine. Like a, is it yeah. gabardine? Well, with that like little kind of brown collar. Oh yeah. Well, Can they're wax mean? jackets at yeah, barber. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like, a, yeah. it's almost got that feel. But, and it's covered, it's got these like dainty little flowers on it. So and so that's beautiful. floor length. So I'm thinking that like done all cool. the way up. And then bright orange handbag. And then there are these Lueve sunglasses that are, they're like a peach color and they, they're they rimless and the whole glass is oh, a peach. Yes. And they've got the big thing. Anyway. I won't be buying those sunglasses because they're really expensive, <laughs> but that's just the vibe. That's but the vibe. That's the vibe yeah. for Paris next week. Um, anyway, sorry, you would like to fully, fully um, usurp that conversation. You would like to buy an oversized trench. What, have you seen any that you like? Um, I've seen loads, actually. I think I'm quite, cla- I think I'll go like quite classic. I know that's um, boring, but I've seen, uh, I can't remember where it's from, but one with like little puff sleeves. So it adds a bit of a difference, mm. but it's still something that you could wear kind of all season nice um and i think i'm gonna go for like a really like a maxi maxi one that's what i'm thinking yeah. i think it's about mine's really maxi maxi one. you're you've got that mega regina pio one it's not regina pio it's resume copenhagen that's it polly's is regina pio yes and i'm obsessed with it when it came i didn't realize how full length it really was mm. i mean it literally hits at my no ankle. but i think that's, a that's vibe good yeah. and yeah. then it's very classic in its like color and its fabrication but it's got this huge like bib collar on it I'm obsessed with it's it. It's really cool. It's really, really How cool. How are you coping one. with these full length trench coats in the rain? Ooh, it means keeping, a dr- keeping dry I mean, underneath. Do they not get then like filthy at the bottom? Yeah, but the trench coats are like the and... easiest things to clean. Well, you don't want it scraping the floor. No. no. Just... You want it like, I'd say ankle. Yeah. Like, your ankle. And I think a point with that would be so yeah, cool. Yes. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, I'm obsessed with mine. If, if resume is still doing the same style, yeah, I highly recommend goodie. it. Um, Georgina, what's on your spring fashion wish list? I definitely want to get some new trousers, wide leg trousers. I've got yeah. my cream ones. Me and M. I know. I've been looking at me and M. Mm. There are a pair of camel wool ones that I wanted. I wasn't quick enough. They oh. sold out. I then took my chance ordering a different size and they're beautiful, but they're just a little bit small. Mm, so true. I just have to wait to see what comes in stock or get a different style. But well, I have try actually tried on quite a few of theirs and they're yeah. really, they're, they're the, pleating at the, front yeah. the pleating at the front is so well designed. Mm-hmm. So I actually feel like I'm kind of spoiled for choice because they've got all colours and, and they're all really styles. thick. Like they yeah. look yeah. really... Well, they hold their shape because yeah. if you yeah. want that wide leg with the pleating, they're really yeah. structured. Yeah. yeah, so some nice, yeah, a neutral colour, I think. I'm nice. going to sign up to the, what was it? Bland Core? Bland standing. Bland standing, yeah. I'm Let's just, I'm, blank or. It's much easier. Yeah. We'll yeah. or. I'm going blank or on my trousers. <laughs> I hear you. Um, Harriet, anything on your wish list? Loafers, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm. And is it too soon to talk about swimwear? Go for it. I mean, it's one of my favourite things. And Is it really? Yeah. I fucking hate buying swimwear. It's my worst thing in the whole world. So I have this really messed up relationship with it, mm. where I love looking for it online. I love buying it. Mm. I love waiting for it to arrive. I try it on at yeah. home and it's like the worst. Okay. Because <laughs> it's quite abnormal for people to wish it. I mean, awesome if you feel good in swimwear, but I just feel like that's something that traditionally women have quite a, yeah, a difficult relationship yeah. buying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I do have that same troubled relationship that everyone you, has. I get this sometimes with some things where you just, you sort of like, forget. you just see it and you're like, oh, that will look, look like that. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wait, no. It's so weird to mm. me because I wouldn't say I've got any kind of like major body positivity or body dysmorphia mm. i'm just sort of like normal in the middle with it all but yeah i was um what I, do you I, look for in your perfect swimwear i've got a real mix at home so i have to say that last year i was really into the skim swimwear mm-hmm. mm. oh interesting because it's all like building blocks so mm. you really just have to pick your color and then she does literally every style she does High-waisted bottoms, t-shirt tops, string tops, like But is it all pieces. in those same bo- uh, bland core colours? <laughs> Boring core, <laughs> what's it called? Are they all in those norm core? Bo- oh. A lot of it is very norm core colours, so like... Not bland core is the word I'm looking for. Bland, bland core, core colours, yeah. So a lot of it is like blacks and greys and nudes, mm. but then every year she does seasonal colours. Okay. So last year it was like this periwinkle blue and a bright bubblegum pink, and she's oh, right. just re-released the senior seasonal colors this year and it's like a bright bright like santorini blue Ooh, and then oh a nice. lime green which I don't, i'm not sure i'm brave enough to do if but... someone told me i had to wear nude swimwear <laughs> yeah. i would just never go on yeah it's not <laughs> like, I'd rather, i would take i'll take yeah no, no yeah. yeah it wasn't really the colors that probably attracted me to it first and foremost it was more like this clever like 
And she does a lot of like modest options as well. So she does like full body suits if you want that in swimwear. Um, you know, maybe if your religion dictates that or something. She does shorts. Like I say, she does string bikinis. Like it's all, it covers literally every nice. gamut. And you can pick, you can like say, oh, I want a really like revealing top, but a more modest bottom. Okay, yeah. So I think it's really clever that in that clever. sense. And it caters to every body shape okay. as a result. Um, but I love Hunza G. I haven't got a Hunza G bikini in many, many years. So mm-hmm. I'm sort of, thinking about that this they year they always have good colours yeah. well. um, okay I think we'll leave it there thank you everyone if you have any feedback please do email podcast at sheerlux.com we love hearing from you don't forget to rate, review, subscribe and tell your friends and we'll see you next time bye bye